Greetings and salutations all. My name is Jim Molay and I am a Principal Technical Instructor here at Okta, pleased to introduce you to one of our outstanding instructor-led courses titled Advanced Security, Protect the Modern Perimeter with Okta. This course is designed for anyone looking to learn how to leverage Okta's powerful policy engine and secure access into Okta as well as your applications by achieving a zero trust security posture. As an instructor teaching this course, I can say this is one of the most important course offerings we have, as everything you do with Okta is for naught if you can't do it securely. And though Okta provides some powerful tools in which you can use to protect access to your org, you need to understand how to properly wield these tools. So, after this introductory video for our advanced security course, perhaps you'll consider signing up for our live instructor-led version with me or one of our other fantastic technical instructors. You'll be able to get hands-on experience working through real-life scenarios with your instructor as a subject matter expert to answer questions as well as guide you and assist you during labs. Registration for this and all of the courses offered by Octa's Education Services is now open. Sign up now and come hang out with me for a couple of days. I'd love to share my Octa knowledge with you. In this course, we discuss the modern day threats from which organizations must protect with regards to cyber attack and examine how to leverage Octa security related features and policies to protect access to your Octa org and all the services within. From understanding the concept of what it means to achieve a zero trust security posture to making that come to fruition via Okta's multi-factor authentication policies. Need to learn how to apply the same security perimeter around your server fleet? The full two-day instructor-led training course also includes a high-level hands-on overview of Okta's advanced server access. Okay, I'm excited to show you a few of these awesome tools, so let's get started. Network zones provide Okta administrators not only a method in which to identify where an authentication request is coming from, but also how that authentication request is being made. For example, via a proxy server or a Tor anonymizer. In fact, if such authentication requests take place and we wish to block those requests, Okta's network zones now provide a feature to block the request without creating a sign-on policy to deny the access. And this is huge as it blocks the request from the Okta router level, meaning the request or requests, perhaps even several thousands of requests, as is the case in a denial of service attack, would never make it to your Okta org's gateway. Simply speaking, network zones allow you to define your secure perimeter by monitoring from where or how incoming traffic is attempting to make calls to the Okta API. You can then build Okta sign-on policies or application level sign-on policies, which then leverage your network zones. Or in the case of attempts coming from known malicious IP addresses or locations, or perhaps an attempt via a mechanism such as a Tor anonymizer, you can simply instruct Okta to block the request at the Okta router level, meaning the attempt never reaches your Okta org's gateway. When using network zones to identify from where you are receiving access requests, you can base the filtering context on one of two things, network IP address or geographic location. When using network IP context in your network zones, Okta will identify the user's gateway IP on every single access attempt. If the IP address matches that in one of your network zones, and that network zone is being used within an Okta policy, then the actions of that policy may be carried out, depending on other rules within the policy. But simply put, network zones based on IP address are one of the most common rules, or triggers if you will, which you will use to have a policy be applied to a user on sign-in. The access requests will also be captured within your Okta system logs, so that you can query the information later for evaluation, or perhaps to take some sort of proactive measures. The network IP zone supports single or multiple IP addresses and ranges, and also supports the use of CIDR notation. And if your goal is simply not only to recognize these access attempts, but to also block them, you can use the checkbox located at the top of the window to block access from an IP matched within the zone. The other context supported by the network zones is that of a dynamic network zone which can look at a geographic location, although technically it still relies on an IP address associated with the geographic location of the access request, as well as IP type, 
When creating a dynamic network zone, Okta relies on a partner service provided by MaxMine to determine the IP address associated with the geolocation of the access request. The dynamic zones can refer to an entire country or a particular region or state within a country. Dynamic network zones also allow for the detection of IP type, such as the request coming from a proxy server or Tor anonymizer, once more allowing you to build policies accordingly around such authentication requests or blocking the attempts altogether. And again, all access requests, including those recognized by your network zones, will be recorded within your Okta system logs. The more context you have about access requests to your Okta org, the more precise your policies can be in terms of both the audience you want them directed at and the level of security you need applied. The more context you have about access requests to your Okta org, the more precise your policies can be in terms of both the audience you want them directed at and the level of security you need applied respectively. Behavior detection is yet another piece of metadata we can add to our Okta sign-on policies to determine the appropriate level of response accordingly. By configuring behaviors within your Okta org and then leveraging those behaviors via behavior detection within an Okta sign-on policy, you can add yet another factor in determining if a particular Okta sign-on policy should be applied to a user when attempting to authenticate into your Okta org. Behaviors are simply used to perform a look back at a user's previous authentication attempts, the number of which is set by an Okta administrator, evaluating such things as the IP address, location, or the device used in the authentication request. When then used as part of an Okta sign-on policy's behavior detection setting, if there is any change in pattern or the behavior of this authentication attempt compared to that of the look back, then the policy may be applied to the user depending on other rules established within the same policy. As I alluded to a moment ago, before you can use behavior detection within your Okta sign-on policies, you'll first need to configure the various behaviors themselves. The good news here is, is that your behavior detection page within your Okta org will have every type of behavior possible already configured. Examples of geolocation, IP address, device and even velocity detection, otherwise known as impossible travel detection, will have already been added. However, you'll want to review these configurations and adjust the look back numbers accordingly. Now, when I say that you already have every possible behavior configured within your Okta org, does that mean that Okta is already applying behavior detection within your Okta org? Actually, no. Keep in mind that behaviors themselves serve no practical function within your Okta org until they are utilized within an Okta sign-on policy. As I've mentioned, your Okta org's behavior detection page already has behaviors set up that can be used within an Okta sign-on policy immediately. But you'll want to review the existing behaviors and make adjustments to the number of past evaluations used in the behavior. And of course, you can always add new behaviors if needed. Once your behaviors have been properly defined, you can reference them within your Okta sign-on policies as one of the conditions of the policy's rule which would trigger the policy and apply it to the user on sign-in. Now I'm sure at this point we all understand the importance of multi-factor authentication at the Okta sign-on level. That is to say, to challenge a user for further identification before they can access their Okta account. But what about after the user has authenticated into Okta? Specifically, when they attempt to access a particular application under conditions where you require that the user yet again meets an MFA challenge. Or perhaps a user was able to sign into their Okta account under conditions that did not require MFA. Yet, when attempting to access an application under those same conditions, I may want to require that an MFA challenge be met. For example, while within the corporate network, perhaps I do not require my employees to provide MFA when they access their Okta accounts from their workstations, but when they attempt to access a sensitive application such as their online calendar via Google, even while on network, I may still want to challenge that user with MFA. This can be done by leveraging application level sign-on policies, a feature of Okta's adaptive MFA by navigating to any application settings page and selecting the sign-on tab you'll find the options at the bottom of the page to add a sign-on policy rule 
Note that the options or conditions under which to enforce an application level sign-on policy rule include some options that are common to the OCTA sign-on policies, such as groups and location. But unlike the OCTA sign-on policies, there are no options for behavior detection or risk scoring in the application level sign-on policies. With that said, you will find options for your application level sign-on policy rules that you would not have at the OCTA sign-on policy level such as client access policies, where you can detect the type of device being used to access the application, or device trust, which can be applied depending on whether a user's device has been enrolled in a company's mobile device management solution, at which point the device would be considered trusted. An important note, however, that device trust is only an option available for applications configured via SAML or WS Federation. Application level sign-on policies can be triggered through both identity provider initiated flow, represented here in this diagram, or service provider initiated flow. At any point the application access is attempted, after Okta authenticates the user, the application level sign-on policy will then be evaluated within the Okta authentication transaction model. So, even if your users attempt to initiate application access from the application itself, assuming the application supports service provider initiated SAML flow, then your application level sign-on policies in Okta will still be evaluated and applied accordingly. All right, in this demonstration, we're going to be taking a look at the Network Zones feature available to you within your Okta org. First thing I'm going to want to do is navigate through the security menu over here on the left and access the networks page where just as a reminder you should have by default two network zones already part of your Okta org which includes the blocked IP zone where if you know a specific IP address or addresses are malicious you can enter them here in the blocked IP zone however I remind you that one of the features we're going to look at here that you can leverage through your network zones is to rather create your own IP zones or for that matter dynamic zones and block them from within the new IP zone or dynamic zone window itself. Something that I'll demonstrate for you here in just a few moments. However, before we do that, let's take a look at a more common example of creating an IP zone and I'm going to start with exactly that, an IP zone here of the two options the other of which being the dynamic zone, something else we'll take a look at here in our demonstration. But selecting IP zone, I can now begin to add my first IP zone and of course typically what we're going to want to do is create zones for any IP address or address ranges from which we know we're going to have users accessing our Okta org. Keeping in mind that any network zone that you create can then eventually be used in one of your Okta policies such as a sign-on policy. So as a quick example, we'll create for this demonstration a network zone that identifies my corporate network IP range, entering in a generic IP address for the purpose of this demonstration. And of course, in this demonstration, I'm using this IP zone to recognize and eventually allow for access coming from my corporate network. But you'll notice here at the top, if I did indeed want to block access from this IP address, I could do so here with the checkbox located just under the zone name label. You'll also notice that the network IP zone options also include the use of proxy IPs. And if you are using proxy IPs, note that Okta leverages a third party partner in this to resolve proxy IPs, and that's done by Zscaler. All right, with that, I'm going to click Save, and I now have an IP zone, which I can now refer to in my various Okta policies, allowing me to identify authn requests from my corporate network. Now, not to take a dark turn in our demonstration, but perhaps I would also like to build network zones, whether they be based on IP addresses or geographic locations, that perhaps denies access. So here, for example, going back to the add IP zone window, now creating a new IP zone titled blocked IPs, so that once again, if I knew that perhaps there were malicious attempts coming from a particular IP address or range of addresses, I could enter those here in the add IP zone window and then deny access to any authentication request coming from that IP address. Now, I wanna make a very important point here. As some of you may know, 
You could reference your network zones in an Okta sign-on policy which denies access to that network zone. By using the option here of blocking access, is this essentially the same thing? Actually, no. There's quite a significant difference in fact. By using the block access option here directly in the add IP zone window, Okta would now deny authentication requests from that IP address way outside at the Okta router level, if you will. So in other words, authentication requests coming from that IP address would never reach my Okta gateway. And that is crucial because if I'm facing some sort of denial of service attack or DDoS attack, if those requests meet my gateway, it will shut down my gateway. But by having Okta block these requests out at the router level, they'll never reach my gateway. Authentication requests denied through one of your Okta sign-on policies are being denied at your gateway. All right, now we also have the same capabilities via dynamic zones. With the dynamic zones, we can again create network zones that refer to geographic locations and or IP type. So whether I'm building a dynamic zone for the purpose of allowing access or for the purpose of my demonstration here, where I'm looking to block access from particular locations, meaning that once again, I'm going to take advantage of the block access checkbox here at the top. And when it comes to choosing my locations, you can refer to an entire country or a particular region or state within that country. So for example, if I know that there are malicious authentication attempts coming from Alsace, France, and a little inside information, my great grandparents are from Alsace, France, so, you know, not surprised I'm getting suspicious activity, but I digress. With that, I'll click save, and now any authentication attempt coming from Alsace, France is going to be blocked. Nice try, Grandma. And as I alluded to just a moment ago, we can also use the dynamic zones to block authentication attempts coming from particular IP types. For example, in this demo, I'll create a new dynamic zone called Block Tor, as perhaps I know that none of my employees have any reason to be using a Tor anonymizer proxy to access my Okta org. So any such attempt will be blocked, again, out at the Okta router level. And now, with several network zones at my disposal, I can begin referencing these in my various Okta security-based policies. All right, in this demonstration, I'd like to accomplish two different tasks, if I may. And the first is to review with you the various behavior detections that have already been added to your Okta org, making any changes necessary that you might want to before then using them in an Okta sign-on policy, which will be the second task of this demonstration. So let's get started by navigating through the security menu and down to the behavior detection page. Now, as I alluded to in the lecture portion, you don't necessarily have to add new behaviors since every possible behavior detection option that you might use within Okta has already been added to the behavior detection page. And in fact, if you look on the right side of this page, every single one of these are currently active. Now, does that mean that they're actually having any effect within your Okta org? Well, no. Though every single behavior detection option has been added, they actually have no effect until they are used within an Okta sign-on policy. Now, with that said, should you want various forms of behavior detection, you can always add any additional behavior detection options you might need beyond the list that's already been created for you. With that said, you'll want to review any behavior detection you plan on using and make revisions to either the label and most importantly, the number of authentications that are used in the lookback evaluation when the behavior detection is then leveraged in an Okta sign-on policy. In other words, let's say that I want to use the new device behavior detection in an Okta sign-on policy to perhaps trigger someone with an MFA challenge when attempting to access Okta from a device that I don't recognize in a certain number of authentications within their past. By clicking the edit button here, we can see that the current behavior name, new device, which is perfectly fine with me, currently has an evaluation look back of 20 evaluations. So in other words, if the user is using a device that they've used in their last 20 authentication attempts, any policy that might contain this behavior would not be triggered. However, any device that is not recognized in the last 20 would trigger such a policy to prompt the user 
with some form of an MFA challenge. Now, perhaps I want to extend that look back, making it even longer. Now, if we consider this change, I'm actually being a bit more lenient for the end user, allowing for a wider number of devices they may have used within their previous authentication attempts. Shortening this number would mean for a more stricter policy, and in a way could be limiting the number of devices that perhaps a user uses to authenticate into Okta. In other words, let's say typically a user uses their desktop computer to access Okta, but every now and then they use a laptop to also access their Okta org. If within their last 10 attempts they did not use that laptop, they're going to be prompted with an MFA challenge here, being that that is outside of the look back range. However, if this number were extended, those additional 20 authentications may actually include the use of that laptop that is not used all that often, and thus no MFA challenge. And of course, security policies may vary from one organization to the next. So you'll want to set these according to your own company's service level agreements around security. And with that, I've now extended my new device behavior detection to include a look back of 30 authentications. Now, keeping in mind that this behavior detection currently has no effect within my Okta org, let us change that by now building an Okta sign-on policy from the authentication page, selecting the sign-on tab, and now clicking add new Okta sign-on policy. Now, when using behavior detection in an Okta sign-on policy, the behavior detections could be one of several other conditions that you're monitoring for, or it could be the sole condition that you're monitoring for. I'm going to build a policy that just simply looks for just the behavior detection itself, specific to a new device. And this is a policy that I want to apply to every single user in my Okta org, and thus I'll assign this to the everyone group. With that, I'll click Create Policy and Add Rule, name my rule, and as I mentioned, we would have the option of using this condition with other conditions should I want to, but for this particular policy, the MFA challenge is specific to a user using a device that they have not used in the past 30 authentication attempts. And for any user where this policy may be applied to their authentication attempt, I simply need them to provide me with their password and any other form of MFA factor in which I've allowed them to enroll in. I'll set the factor requirement for the device itself, change any other rule options I may want to before clicking the Create Rule button. And with that, my new Okta sign-on policy for new device detection is now active and is ready to challenge users attempting to authenticate on devices that I do not recognize. Well, you know, within the last 30 authentications, but you know what I mean. So there you have it. Modify the existing behavior detections accordingly or add new ones if need be, and then reference them on their own or with other conditions in your Okta sign-on policies. In this demonstration, we'll be looking at how to leverage the application level sign-on policies to challenge your users for their identity when signing into specific applications under conditions which are being monitored via your application level sign-on policies. To set up an application level sign-on policy, you'll first want to navigate to your applications page and then select a specific application for which you want to build the sign-on policy. So let's say for my demonstration, I'm looking to build some extra layers of security when my users attempt to access their salesforce.com application. Having already configured salesforce.com in my Okta org via SAML, I'm going to head to the sign-on tab, where at the bottom of this page, you'll find the sign-on policy section, where you can now add a new sign-on policy rule. And note that this is available for any application you may have configured within your Okta org, although the options you now see here in the actual app sign-on rule window may vary from one application to another. For example, an application configured via SAML or WS Federation would include options for device trust. An application configured via Secure Web Authentication or SWA would not have such options. I'll begin my new app level sign-on rule with a name, simply here, MFA for Salesforce. Though I can specify the policy be applied to only certain groups, or for that matter, particular users, I am going to simply indicate that this policy applies to any user who has been assigned the application. 
I can also reference the location in the policy, leveraging one of our network zones. For example, perhaps I want this policy to be applied when the user is not currently in our corporate network. Continuing on, we'll see options for the client, meaning that I even have the control of building a policy that might challenge a user when they're using their mobile phone versus a desktop computer, even getting as granular as the operating system on the device. And as I had mentioned, because Salesforce was configured via SAML, I'll even have the option of using device trust. Building policies that can evaluate whether the user's device has been enrolled in our organization's mobile device management solution, marking that device as a trusted device. Allowing access for those devices that have been trusted, perhaps denying access for those that are not. And finally, we'll set our access actions down below where I will be allowing access, but I will be prompting for multi-factor every single time in this particular scenario. And keep in mind that this particular policy will now be used in conjunction with any sign-on policies I may have. And in fact, perhaps there were conditions under which somebody signed into their Okta org where they were not required to provide MFA at the time. But now, when accessing Salesforce under conditions where an MFA challenge would be required, then that user would be prompted to satisfy an MFA challenge via some form of MFA type that have allowed them to enroll in for use in our organization. And here now my end user in my demonstration is able to access Salesforce, but only after meeting an MFA challenge. So there you have it. Navigate to any application you've configured within your Okta org, select the sign on tab, and at the bottom of this page, explore the various sign on options that you'll have for adding that extra layer of security when users attempt to access an application via your application level sign on policies. Well, that's going to do it for this training video, and I hope you found that beneficial. And if you'd like to learn more or get some hands-on experience or prepare for Okta certification exams, be sure to register for an instructor-led training class today. I would love to see you in one of our classes. On behalf of Okta's Education Services, thank you.